Hi guys, I'm back with another video. I'm okay with making these quick videos, but I'm I'm also going to try a new thing, which is like vlogging my daily drawing, which is showing you, it won't show you the complete start to finish of each portrait um, all in one video. What it's going to do is show you the amount that I get done each day. Um, I'm also a mum, so I juggle the kids and life around the artwork. So that's the best way for me. It makes the editing nothing easier. And um, yeah, so that's the way I'm going to do it and see how that goes. I've always liked drawing the side profile of a face. When I was a kid, I used to draw it all the time. I would draw a side profile and I'd try to make it look as realistic as possible and I'd get a bit, you know, lost when it comes to joining the nose to the lips. So, one day I just looked at a side profile of somebody and drew them and from there I've been using reference pictures. Okay, so I'm going to start with the forehead. Let's go from about here. I'm not going to go as far as to draw the full um, head, ear, hair. I'm just going to draw the face. So let's start with the forehead. Now I will pull it in slightly and then pull the nose out. It's actually hard for me to remember how not to do it. <laughs> I draw a lot, so I've picked up certain muscle memory, you could call it. Let's see, it used to look a lot worse than this, but yeah, that will do. And then we're gonna, this is where I used to get lost, where to put the lips. Now, at this point I would already realise that I'd messed it up, but I couldn't understand where the line came from from the nose, so I would keep going. We all started somewhere. And then I would go straight down to the neck. Now at this point I might have realised that the nose is a little bit far forward so I might have just changed that slightly. And this is really hard to draw things wrong. <laughs> I'm so used to trying to get everything perfect. Okay, this needs changing, this rubber. I'm gonna rub that out. Okay, now then we get to the part of the eye where you think, I don't know where this bit goes. So I probably put it really close. And This is really bad, guys. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Look, this is how I remember doing it as a kid, so yeah. Um, I remembered at least to put a little thing there for the eyelid and a little thing there for that eyelid. Of course. Um, and then I would always do the crease. I mean, trust me, back in my day, there were plenty of sketchbooks you would open and see something like this when I was really little so that would have been a rough idea now shall I add some shading to that let's go in with the shading I would probably just colour it all in to be honest I'm actually going to go as far as to use tissue which I never ever ever use but I'm going to show you what I used to do I don't think I can bring myself to use tissue you know I really don't think I can. But you know what? Let's do what? Let's do this legit. I'll go with tissue. Now, this was my way of shading when I was younger. Um, I actually started out shading like this when I started drawing. But I would obviously do it a lot more delicately and take more time, but... Sometimes I did just throw it down like this and then I would go over it afterwards. Cross hatching. Darkening certain areas. It's really like a game of colouring in. So I'm going to tidy this up slightly.
Now let me try and think of where I would have put the shadows back then. Um, well, I would have probably done a shadow here. Probably done a bit of a shadow under here. And under here. Around the nose. Just depends on where the light's coming from. I used to enjoy shading the nose. I used to really like that. I always did like a V here and then just coloured it in. And obviously I would try and blend this around. And I was always, always add the contour. <laughs> that I knew about at an early age. Of course, I'd do the eyeball like a star and shape that. Now let me get some tissue and do this legit exactly how I used to do it when I was a kid. Now, let's do some tissue here. Let's just scrunch it up. Wow. This brings back some real memories, you know. Mm -mm. It actually feels really good. And look how good it blends. I never use tissue. I don't even know why. It actually blends really well. <laughs> it would save a lot of time, I suppose. And then, once again, I would go back in with the contour. Do it really harsh. Shade probably a bit around here. The forehead. There, under the eye. It's all about this cheek. Somehow I thought that was very important. As you see on magazines and stuff, the woman always has contour. So that I did notice. Darken that. And then just go over the lips. Now, I will probably go over it afterwards and whiten the eye. I think that's about it. That's basically what I would have done back then. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a pretty decent side profile drawing that I am using a reference for. I'm not going to go in, I'm just going to do it basic, but just to show you in line. I might even create a little line for the eyes, where the nose was, mouth, chin. But they won't be in that order, but just to see if I can get a rough idea, same size. Okay. Just following the guide of her nose and where the shadows are. The shadow goes across there and down to here. So it's very, very dark in the middle there. And then it kind of gets darker right here. So that's just the shadow. Okay, that'll do. And then from there. She's kind of pouting in this picture, 
So it might look a bit strange at the moment, but give me a second, it should turn out okay. Should start to look okay in a minute. Corner of the mouth is in line here. Kind of fades out a bit there. So then I'm going to, that part is quite dominant there. And then there's a light part. Kind of goes up. And then from here. Yep, very pouty. That should be pretty easy to draw. Now you can see the difference already. Very important to follow exactly what you see in a picture. Because as you could see, when I was just working on the top lip there, it looked as though this was going to be very unrealistic. But it's starting to come together already. So just trust what you see, guys, and draw what you see to the best of your own ability. And when you see it afterwards, you might just... Because you know when you're staring at it, you're right in the picture. Your eyes, it's like you're inside of it. But when you sit back and kind of look at the whole thing, that's when things start to make sense. So if you just try to draw exactly what you see, that's when the realism starts to come through. Sometimes our memory of the way things look are actually not spot on. So having a reference picture, for me, helps a lot. She's got some highlights here on her lip. I'm going to leave those there. And also above this lip is a shadow. So I'm just going to leave that there as a guide. Now for the chin. That part goes from the lip, straight from the lip across. And it's comes out straight away. Not a very big chin, just comes down straight there, turns at a bit of an angle, and then just scoops round. Now I can already see that I made a mistake, so what I'm going to do is try and elongate this part of the nose slightly because it really does look quite long here so yep yeah, I think that will do there's always time to correct little bits here and there I hope you guys can hear me well I've got my fan on it's summer over here and this fan is going to be on until it gets cold again because this room gets very hot. So, just some eyelashes from that eye over there. Let me see. Okay, and now we're going to go in with the eye. And the eyebrow comes from around here. So I'm going to start with the eye, it's the eyelash there, little guide. And where does it come to? The nose, just past where the nose is. So I'm going to draw it about here. Now again, I'm just drawing what I can see. This line goes straight down. Now checking the distance from where it starts just past the mouth. And it's probably the same width as the mouth, so from there to about here. So I'm going to make that line come down to here. And then of course it does swoop here in a shadow, so I'll put that little shadow there. But I'd say it ends around there. Then the bottom one. I 
kind of scoops up slightly here and then kind of scoops back down here and maybe a little bit of a cat eye when looking from the front I'm not sure so there's a little bit of a crease there let's have a look now that's the eye done now what I'm going to do now is you can see there's a guideline in front of the eye which is here and I think that's the beginning of the eyelid and that can come all the way around to here up slightly scoop that round and then it comes in close here funny when I was younger I didn't know anything about adding real depth I used to go over the shadowed areas with the dark pencil or as dark as I could with any pencil but I didn't really know how to add depth whereas with this I'm already looking forward to adding the black because that really will you know make certain parts go back and bring certain parts forward there's the eyelashes and they go all the way up to there and there are some light ones here and then some more come down the eye now that is more realistic and of course the eyebrow you can see a tiny bit of the eyebrow on this side and there will be some eyebrow And there we go. Okay. Now the only parts left now would be a little bit of a shadow here for that part of her nose. And up here. And then obviously the part I used to enjoy the most. But this one is completely different. Just goes straight down like that. See already I can see the, the look of her pouting with this crease here. And then there's another light one next to it. It fades out. But once we've added some shading you're about to see that. Mm. I might add some graphite powder first. Dip my brush in the graphite powder and I'm going to go over her face just so, so softly in the areas where it's quite light. I just really want to lay down a base of graphite. I, I use this technique a lot, so why not go in with it now? Okay, so I've noticed something that I've missed out under the eye. Just add that now. Okay, do I went graphic 4B pencil and Actually, I might sharpen it. I don't even need to sharpen it, it's fine. I'm going to start adding the shadows now, the way they kind of blend into the darkest and um, one tone up. I'll leave all the lightest areas. I just want to add these shadows quickly.
by the way guys my daughter my youngest daughter loves art and because um she sees me making videos she said that she really 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 wants to make a video she's eight years old and i've told her that maybe we could make a video today or tomorrow so i will be uploading a video of my little girl and please show her some support if you're subscribed and if you're watching um, if you're not subscribed, please do tick the subscribe button and tick the bell so you see all my future videos. So far, if I'm honest, I'm really surprised with the amount of people that have subscribed. I'm really happy to see that people are enjoying watching my work. Um, this can be like a great little outlet for me, really, with the art. And I just love the idea of teaching people, so if I can teach you some shortcuts that took me many years to learn this so be it and also just for those art heads that are just obsessed with art like I've always been so thank you so much guys for the sh support you've shown already it's very appreciated okay now shadows around here I'm just going to go in with this pencil a bit Now it's time to use my earbud and I'm going to blend in all of this dark pencil. I really don't like rushing pictures but I need to get used to this. Now this is my favourite tool to blend with. It just blends so well on the paper, it's something I'm used to using, I've been using it for years. so. Um, I've always got loads of these earbuds around the house, always, at my desk, so we never run out of earbuds. Just basically going to just go over the drawing and try and blend the darkest areas and set out a little bit of a guide. It does blend down to here, but that side is much darker. So this bit doesn't need to be so dark, but I'll fix that after. You can already see the difference, obviously. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the eraser. Where's the little circle one? 
to highlight certain areas. Now she's got some dots up here. Well, I'm going to do some dots because it's not a real light area. Up above the eyebrow there, the light goes across. And then some dots around here. And there's a thin line just going down here. So my pencil sharpen now this is a um i'm gonna say mono zero it's not a mono zero razor it's a polychromos faber castell black pencil first i'm going to i see a little part of the eyelash from the other side so i'll do that and a little a little tiny bit there let's add a few little while it's still sharp Let's add a few of those little dark hairs. I'm just using a 6H to add the lighter areas and tidy them up. We'll just really add a little bit of graphite there because once I blend, even though that's a um, polychromos pencil, black pencil, it kind of blends well with pencil, with graphite, unlike, ch um, not charcoal, yeah, charcoal and pastel. So... As you can see, I'm just tidying up the outline areas and around the nose, adding that little bit of pencil. And now I'm just going to use my brush and I'm going to try and blend that in as nicely as I can, smoothly as I can. I could go over the skin with pencil and literally just tidy up every bit of it, but that's pretty pointless at this point. And it's hard now because I'm so used to drawing faces, I kind of tend to put things in close to the right place, so trying to remember how I used to do it was a bit difficult, but it really did used to look like that. I found sketchbooks over the years with old drawings in them from when I was young, and scraps of paper, 
and that's pretty much how they look. We all have to start somewhere, don't we? Look at the effect as I blend it with the brush. This is the part I really enjoy. It starts to come to life for real. When I push it like that, I'm kind of rubbing more graphite onto the picture from the brush. And I want to do it sideways and try to blend. Whatever brush you use, you'll get used to how you're comfortable doing it. I've been using this one for years now. And it holds quite a lot of graphite inside of it. So it's really handy. I don't ever clean it. Uh, I will go over this again with the eraser one last time but that should do I think I'll use my earbud to blend here this area would be a lot darker because of the image but it's just the way I'm going to do it I'm starting to rush a bit now because I have got to go and get my kids from school very soon. But to be fair, I could have finished this a while ago. I'm just getting obsessed with it like I always do. Am I the only one? Are there people out there that do exactly the same thing as me? I find myself going over pictures over and over and over again. I don't know, I get a bit lost in it. Even when I think I'll just do a quick sketch for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Two hours later, I'm still there. And yeah, it does come more to life, but again, it means that I'm almost unable to do a quick sketch because I get carried away. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm not the only one. But now I'm gonna go over the outside to tidy that up. Where I might have smudged with the brush. There we go. And that there is my version of a realistic face. That one just looks absolutely terrible, unfortunately. <laughs> I really need to wish I could tidy this up, but. So anyway, there's my do's and there's my don'ts. Now, if you pay attention, most faces, depending, sometimes it just depends on if your mouth is further back, further forward or whatnot, if your nose pokes out or if your nose is quite flat. But in general, that part will come down in line or close to the nose. The eye is only a certain distance from the nose. The nose could be out here from the, the lips could be out here from the nose. They could be further in than the nose just depends so pay attention to little things like that now when I look at the picture straight down everything seems to be in line as long as you follow your reference picture you'll get a lot closer to a realistic look whereas this one here 
as you can see everything's out of proportion so there we have it guys there's my do's and don'ts video I actually have never done one before so this is my first if you would like to see another one maybe with lips or eyes or whatever please do let me know and um, hopefully this has been useful remember to subscribe and click that bell so that you can see my future videos and also I'm artist Marie Lowe on Instagram and on snapchat so go follow me guys I'm gonna go get my kids <laughs>